What's going on guys, Van Cup Gaming here, welcome back to the video. It is Sniper Thursday and we are trying to cover the rest of the rifles in Barford 1 before I bring up a new series and do something else. And this week we have the Mauser Gewehr Mark 95. Now if I do sound slightly weak in this video my voice is slightly unclear, I am pretty sick and I was unsure if I was going to do this video for you, know, you guys or not and I thought you know what I want to get one video out this week so I'll do this one, I'll try and get Saturday's one as well but hopefully you enjoy this and it might be out late, it might be out on Saturday as opposed to the Thursday or out on the Friday sorry as opposed to the usual Thursday now for the Gewehr 95, it is a rifle I've talked, up, talked about in different videos before, but only briefly. I've never done a full coverage on this gun, and honestly it's a very fun gun to use, and it's kind of a throwback to Battlefield 4 and 3 weapons. And now this rifle is actually very unique and pretty interesting compared to most of the rifles in Battlefield 1, which are just standard bolt-action rifles. This one's actually slightly interesting, and... It's kind of fun to use as well. It does does definitely does not follow the same pattern as the rest of the rifles. Now in real life it gets its name because it was developed in 1895 and one of the specialties about it is that it's actually a straight pull bolt. So usually when you pull the bolt back on a sniper rifle you have to turn it up, pull it back and then do the same thing as you go backwards. With this rifle you literally just have to grab the bolt, pull it backwards and push it forwards again. Now in reality, you would think this makes it quicker, it doesn't actually make it much quicker, um, doesn't have an effect overall, but it does mean that you have the, uh, you avoid the problem, sorry, of end up jamming the bolt when you turn it. You know, a good sniper is not going to have a problem with that, but somebody who's not used to using a sniper might end up not turning it enough, not enough force, or in general just messing up by not knowing uh, the exact resistance of a certain rifle. Occasionally it differs and a, a variant, it changes about. Um, but for the most part this rifle was used by everyone from good snipers to very very experienced ones to even just standard regular infantrymen. Now because of this straight pull ball feature it earned the name the Ruckzuck by German soldiers basically means forward and back or back and forth. Nothing amazing interesting but I really like little quirks like that you know you can actually see how the rifle might have been used and what soldiers actually thought of it and for the most part they really liked it. It was used by the um, German army and the Austro-Hungarian army right up until 1945. Of course the Austro-Hungarian Empire was over by that time but the German army still used it mostly in the police. Uh, during World War II it was mostly used to sort of stop rebellions in different European countries that were taken over by Germany but it was still heavily used and occasionally would pop up in the hands of infantrymen. Now, aside from having a straight pull bolt, it does actually have quite a few interesting features that transfer over to Battlefield 1 as well. The first thing is that it uses a N-block clip, similar to an M1 Grand. Now, usually with stripper clips, you put the stripper clip in, shoot all the rounds, and then the stripper clip comes out on a spring. And the problem with this is that in Battlefield 1, the soldier actually stops the bullets coming out, meaning if you have a 10-round rifle, you shoot 6 rounds, you have to reload 4, but there's no 4-clip weapon, so you have to put individually put the bullets in the gun. Now with the Mauser Gewehr 95, there's actually a clip release. You press a button, the clip comes flying out, and you can put a whole new 5 round clip in. This means that it's not significantly quicker than any other gun, but it does mean that when you reload you don't have to worry about putting individual bullets in, and you can just simply go up, take that one out, put a new one in, and you instantly have 5 rounds again. And also because then it has this M block clip, when you're on one bullet left, the clip will actually fly out and make a ting sound, again, like an M1 Grand, actually allows you to know that, oh, I have one bullet left. It's surprisingly a useful feature, the amount of times I'm using a rifle and I don't realize I have barely any ammo left, and this little ting suddenly goes off and go, ah, one round left, better reload now or as soon as I can. And of course then for Battle for 1, this means you don't have to worry about reloading one bullet at a time. You can simply go up and shoot three rounds, reload reasonably quickly, and you have instantly five rounds again. So you avoid the whole problem of, oh okay, I fired three shots, or I fired seven shots, let's say. Do I reload one stripper clip and then two bullets, or do I just not bother and wait until I've used all of the ammo to put two stripper clips in? Now the weirdest feature this gun has in Battlefield 1 is the fact there is no sweet spot. Of course for all the rifles in Battlefield 1 there is a sweet spot where you do 100% damage to the chest. This rifle doesn't have one of those making it very similar to rifles in Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 3. But then the difference it shares from those is that they do 100% damage at a certain range and that drops off to lower damage of course. But this rifle only does 90 damage to 20 meters that decreases to 79 damage beyond uh, I believe it's 125 meters. 
So this basically means that you cannot get a one-shot kill unless you hit the head, or unless the enemy's damaged, of course. But even then, it's pretty unlikely, making this rifle not near useless, but not quite as effective as other ones. So you won't find that a lot of time you're shooting, you're, ah, I'm not killing anyone. But you will find that you hit somebody with a shot, they don't die in one bullet, and you think, okay, why is that? That's because it only does 90 damage maximum, and you really need to get two shots, of course, unless they're damaged, or unless you get the headshot. Now for its other stats, it has the second fastest rate of fire out of all sniper rifles, that's not including the um, M1903 experimental. I don't count that as a sniper rifle, but it has the technical highest rate of fire out of those rifles. Uh, and the bullet velocity is somewhat slow at 620 meters. Because this rifle has no sweet spot though, it doesn't really matter, because you don't want to sit too far back, because you're putting yourself at a massive disadvantage with not getting many shots off and not getting one-shot kills because there's no sweet spot. And there was only one technical sniper variant for this rifle, and that is the Marksman variant, which has a medium range scope with a stability grip. Now this basically means that there is no variant perfectly suited to the sweet spot, obviously there is no sweet spot. So with most rifles, one that's super long range with a long range sweet spot, that's obviously perfectly suited. But this one doesn't have one, so it doesn't matter what rifle you pick, all of them are as effective as the other ones. You might find yourself more effective at a certain range with a different one, but for the most part it doesn't matter. Now the two other variants are first of all the infantry, which is honestly the standard iron sight variant. It's kind of fun to use, but definitely has limitations, obviously being a bolt action it has limitations, and then obviously being slightly weak compared to the other rifles, then it has limitations there as well. And then the second one is the carbine variant, which has improved hip fire and a lens sight. This one is kind of okay. It's a somewhat more close quarters because of the improved hip fire, but at the same time, I still don't like the lens sight. Um, so for that purpose, it's kind of pushed back. Now the final cool little feature about this rifle is because of the straight ball bolt. Any variant you use allows you to cycle the bolt when aiming down sight, meaning you don't have to aim down at somebody, shoot at them, go out from ADS, lose your target, and then go back in once the bolt is cycled. You can shoot at somebody, cycle the bolt, and stay with your reticle perfectly on them. This is a pretty big feature, although again, because, of the, because of there's no sweet spot, you aren't going to be able to get perfect one-shot kills, which does kind of help them because it means you can get one shot, quickly go again, and get another shot, as opposed to obviously having to zoom out and then reacquire your target. So overall, this rifle suffers from weak damage, no sweet spot, and that's about it. The 5 round magazine is small, yes, but it's the same as every other rifle except the Enfield. And it's really pretty quick, and again, because you eject all five rounds, or however many rounds left in the magazine when you do decide to reload, and you put five straight back in, it means it has a very effective and quick reload. So overall, a good term to give this weapon is kind of effective. It's not a very technical term, um, but that's really all you can say about it, is it's kind of effective. It's kind of effective uh, for medium range because it can do 90 damage, which is good enough to take out Sony in one shot, but at the same time is not a one shot kill. Um, and overall, it doesn't just have doesn't, doesn't have the range, there's no variant for range, and the close quarters just isn't powerful enough to be used for that. So for that reason, it is kind of effective. Overall, hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. It's a bit of a sort of an orderly one, again, I'm slightly sick and I kind of sort of focus then and sleep badly, but I'll get better. Uh, but hopefully you guys did enjoy the video, do like, share, subscribe. This is Rank Up Gaming, out.